Okay, remember I told you earlier, I was going to show you the birth year of Adam Gann Sr. Got the proof, folks, and here it is. Adam Gann, white pole, zero. What's that mean? Under 21. No, no. Just, he just went over 50. He just had his 50th birthday. Because in the previous tax list, he was still charged a pole. From See? this point forward, He's free and clear. So therefore, use your fifth grade arithmetic, fifth grade, hear me? I'm Mike Trump, fifth grade, repeat everything, okay? Subtract 50 from 1730, from, from 1833, and what do you 1733. Get? There's his birth year, right but there. But again, you have to know what the law was that was in effect at that time because they changed that ceiling from time to time. Okay, so then if you go on down, you'll see him listed again as senior, zero, poll tax. So he's not paying any taxes. But the clerk listed him as senior. Now, that's not my writing. Next. Now, we want to show you what the clerk did. And junior and senior this time period does not mean father and son. It means older and younger. Thea, am I right? That okay. Is all right, so now look here. The clerk writes in 1790, Adam Gann Sr., zero poll tax, 100 acres. And here is the detail from the, from the, the documents. There's the grant number from North Carolina. That's recorded in the deed books, the grant books. We come on down to Thomas, to John, to Adam Gann, G-A-N, Junior, what does that tell us? That means that that guy was younger than the Adam above him. So, at this point, Adam Gann Jr. is paying taxes because he's over 21. Well, we know from other sources that he was born in when he was born in 1769. Okay, so okay. And it tells you there, this is the first time he appears on the militia tax list. Now, sometimes they didn't appear when they were 21. They could have been living elsewhere or whatever, but, or they got missed. So, little, here now. Now, here's Clement Gann, called Clem. See, he's still paying taxes. Here's Nace Gann. Okay. In 1790, Ignatius buys his first land. That's the way it's written on the court deed. Okay. The tax people called him Nace. Nickname. Never appeared again any place. Maybe he didn't like it and he told the old boy, don't write my name that way. Well, you see, if you keep going on down here, you see... Adam Jr., Adam Sr., blah, blah, blah. Here's Nance down here again. So, there's some, some nickname calling him there. Next. Is that John? Back up. Son? Uh, yes. That's Steadfast John. Yeah, this is Steadfast John. Now, we went round and round and round, and I think I even called you, uh, Gene, about this. Because of the birth year uh, and... and when his first son was born, uh, we were trying to you know, make it work out mathematically. Uh, you know, he wasn't having a son when he was 12 years old. So, um, so that, that's a little bit of a guess there, but it's as close as we could get it. Um, next slide. Okay. Now, from all of this, from all of those birth years, that we found here in the tax list and from other court documents both uh, in uh, Tennessee, North Carolina, uh, Georgia. We are showing our suggestion of who the actual sons of Samuel and Elizabeth were. Number one, John. Still haven't been able to determine a birth year we know he died in 1817 because he left a will. And Joy writes about that in her book. 
Number two, Ignatius. Now that is not our Nathan from Washington County. This is the Ignatius who went to Georgia and settled there and lived for a hundred years, etc. Okay. Adam Sr. We now know his birth year is 1733. We know he died in 1812. Nathaniel, not Ignatius Nathan. This Nathaniel, we found him in, in, in Greene County, in Georgia, in North Carolina, in Tennessee. He was moving around, and from what we can tell, he was born between 1734 and 39 but he's a separate person. Now we've got William. Brand new name. Where did we find him? Two years ago, Gary and I found him in Tennessee, Washington County Superior Court, where he was being, he and his son, Junior, were being sued. Okay, and then we found him on the tax list. Never found him again, so he went someplace after he had trouble in court. Well, his birth year is 1740 to 43. There's nobody else he could belong to because they weren't around. So he has to be a Samuel son. Okay, next one, Clement. No, no, I'm sorry, go back. Go back. Next one is Clement. Well, we've known about him for years. We know that there was a Clement in Virginia I just showed you in 1660. Now here we are. You know, um, what, how many years later, 50, 60, 70 years later, another guy named Clement being born to a Samuel who was probably in Maryland. Now, do you see the connection, the possibility of this connection? There it is, clear as day. A lot of people said, well, were the Gans Catholic? And we know there were several Catholic popes named Clement in the 1300s. And Ignatius was a saint. But the, the popes who were clement were, were um, very worldly, shall we say. <coughs> no more needed. Okay. okay. And we know that Clement was selling land in Washington County and disappears after 1818. Next son, Charles. We've got Charles in, in uh, Virginia with, with the family. But he disappears. I'm sure the Indians got him. Or somebody got him. But he, he never materialized again. Then we've got Samuel. That's Joy's uh, uh, answers. And then we've got the new Daniel. We found him in North Carolina in a big court case. And given the age of that material, he couldn't belong to anybody else except Samuel. So there, folks, is, is a snapshot picture of the sons of Samuel number two. In Virginia. Okay. Next slide. Is this working? Ah, ah, now I can interrupt him with impunity. <laughs> okay. This, this particular slide is one that Bill has worked with quite a bit. And as you can see here, you have two separate families from Adam Sr. And here's Ignatius Nathan. Steadfast John and the others. Then you have the second marriage. And Bill, do you want to say anything more with this? Yeah. Okay. Oh, the death was in Roan County? No. Oh. Well, we don't know. We don't know. All we know is that Adam uh, married a second time after his first wife died, probably in the late 1780s. He remarried because he had three children he named in his will. And when you check out those children in the censuses later on, you get their birth years. He had one son, Samuel. Well, why do you suppose he named the son Samuel? Because his father was Samuel. Get the picture? Okay. Now, here's where the rest of it, this is old Isaac Sr. A lot of us come from Isaac Jr., son of Ignatius Nathan. This is Ignatius's brother, and he names his second son Isaac. Watch the naming patterns, folks. It'll tell you an awful lot. 
We don't know a thing about old Isaac Sr., except he was there paying taxes year after year. Then he just disappears. He's dead and gone, buried out in the woods. Now, here's where we tie in with some of the stuff that Theola was talking to this morning. Remember she talked about Elizabeth Gann and her indigent children in the 18, 15, 16 in Jefferson County and where was her husband? And she suggested that the husband was named James because in 1812 there was a James in Jefferson County who made some purchases with another guy. Three years later this woman, Elizabeth, is indigent with all these Gann kids. Connection? I say yes. Here's why. Adam Sr., his first wife died. He remarried his second wife, and they moved to Jefferson County. He takes along with him this, this young boy who was just born, takes him as a teenager to Jefferson County. Okay? Elizabeth's first husband died around 1800, left her with two little boys in Jefferson County. And the next thing you know here is Elizabeth with five children in Jefferson County. So I'm saying that there's no other Gan in Jefferson County in 1800. So therefore, I'm suggesting that James Gan is the son of Adam and his first wife. They're living in, in Dandridge. James and Elizabeth meet, they get married, and they have a family. He dies 15 years later, and she's left with all these kids. Backing up one slide, okay. why don't you tell us what your red pound sign is that you insisted yes, that I put in there and make red? This red pound sign is James. Next slide. Thank you. Right, it should have been here, too, but it got left out. Thank you, Gary, for leaving it out. Uh, so so that's, that's just supposition on my part. And one of these days, Thea is going to prove it. Now the, way we're, now, the way we're going to prove it is to get DNA from one of these sons. And we will prove it. You come back in 10 years, and I'll say I told you so. Okay? All right. And for anyone who wants to study this more at length, there is an enlarged copy of this on the wall in the back room. So, so you can study this chart more closely. Are you putting it in the gazette? No, this is part of the tax saw project, and it will be published eventually. It may be in the Gazette. It may be as a standalone publication. Okay, here. This, is, this is just one snippet out of that 40 pages of right. detail. There's a San Daniel over here, question mark, well, in the deed, when Clement sells land to Daniel, he says, the deed says, where we now live. Meaning they're living together. Okay? And, and we know that Clement was living in North Carolina at this time period because he's signing documents there. And we know that Clement had a, probably had a, a brother named Daniel, who was there, and Joy went to the courthouse and found the document about that Samuel in court. You see, pretty soon these names start going like this together over a period of time and place. Next. And before we leave this one, okay. here's another whole family that we knew very little about. Ishmael Isom, and coming on down, his son Jacob, and this is the one that we did quite a bit of work on last year in Illinois, White County, Illinois, where they went from Tennessee. It includes, Thea, there's another Alfred down here. There's that name popping up again. Kay's particularly interested in this family. Now, Would this be my Leah Gann's No, no. Oh, oh, yes, 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 I'm sorry. You're right, yes. Um, and we wrote about that in the article in this issue. Yes, right. Uh, see, this is only sons on here. We and didn't put daughters, but Leah, if so, we would have put Leah on here. She would be descending down. As the son of, of Isom. See, a bunch of female marriages in that county at the same time. Okay. Uh, now, look, 
Thea put a chart up this morning that showed a George Daniel and an Adam Alford. Where did those names come from? Okay. Here's Daniel. Here's George. Here's Alfred. And of course, we got Adams all over the place. Those are Gan given names. Yes! Thank you. <laughs> See? See? It, it fits together, folks. And all we need is just a few little apples and oranges in between the pie dough. And, and we got it. Next.